Swaddling, is it necessary? No. Why is swaddle practice? Well, we come to terms with having a baby. A baby is got a lot of movement. It's got its own personality, its own sleep time, eating time, scheduling. They have to learn how to be a baby. The biggest difference from being developing in the fetus versus right after birth is gravity. Now, a lot of people say, well, gravity, what does that have to do with development? Well, everything. In the fetus, the body is meant to expand in all directions. That's the whole point of utero is in the brain, the heart, everything's supposed to expand in all directions. That's what it's supposed to do in a frictionless environment. And how is that so? Because we don't intake and we don't eliminate. There's no breathing, there's no eating and pooing. Any of those things happen during the amniotic fluid stage, all of that, however you wanna look at fetal development, um, it could be life-threatening, if not deadly, to the baby. It's not meant to happen because you're not meant to have that expansion or that contraction, that elimination. The first time your baby is exposed to that is in natural, full-term delivery. You have active muscles contracting, and then you have passive muscles allowing the baby to go into position. Now, this is the conversation we have to look at. Right now, I've just about completed um, my birth process deviation from birth to NICU trauma. Um, there's four stages of deviations within the birthing process, which will then affect your baby's development. And these, again, are just sub-micro evaluation techniques, but they're very important details to how your child is going to develop. Because we had a question yesterday, can I tell what milestones are missing for talking? Yes, I can. However, it still depends on the organization of the baby, and that's another live I'll do today. So when you are having now birth happening, this is the first time you're going to be exposed to gravity, your baby. It is the only non-optional force that we have. We have it from the day we're born until the day we die. Right, And so now your baby is being exposed to gravity. So it's very important that the, the foam within the lungs and everything forces from the outside as the atmospheric pressure and gravity forced from the, from the outside, inside, outside, and you get that, wow, that first breath is really important because it organizes the body to gravity. Now, if the first breath doesn't take process, you know, properly, then I can tell you right now, without some form of intervention, if you can't organize gravity and breathing, you're not gonna organize gravity and vertical milestones. You just won't. You need, there's gonna be some kind of help. So again, these are the things we need to look at. I don't understand why we have the wait and see approach and don't go through everything that needs to go through in a step-by-step -step process. And that's why, again, that's why I'm just putting together now the birth deviation process. By the way, this, Thursday's webinar on um, planning for cerebral palsy, that process will be introduced. It's also gonna be in the reflex course, that process will be introduced. So when you're doing those things and you're, you're having that birthing process to go on, now a lot of people believe that lack of movement is stability. Uh, no, movement is stability, okay? We, let's look at the Einstein with his bicycle. What's the most balanced feature is a running bicycle. A bicycle, and again, should be very unbalanced, but it has two percussion forces within the wheels. It also has the percussion force between you pedaling, and a, in, in motion, there's balance. It's lack of motion that that bike can't stand on its own to, to, for anything. It's just top heavy and it'll just go right over. That's the same with our babies. They are meant to move. So when you swaddle a baby, first of all, I feel like the guy in the TikTok fight. How do you know three signs a girl's cheating on you? And he's like. So anyway, first of all, right, you have to know what kind of birth did your child had, have. When your child has respiratory, cardiac, any of those kind of distresses to organs, you don't want compression on those organs. You don't want breathing is, again, breathing is not just breath. Breathing is life. It's your basic life function. Breathing, balance, and heart functions, your basic life functions, right? And if breath swallow ratio is off, your baby can't be, at, at a day old, doesn't go, <coughs> like someone posted yesterday on the swaddling thing. Well, it was teaching my baby how to unswaddle, to get him to have force. No, you, we don't want early muscle intervention. That's the, we want weight transfer, transitional skills. And again, like when, when I present in hospitals, not only do you see swaddling on healthy babies, 
they have wedges down their side. And, and this is what someone pinged me in yesterday, Virginia. They have a new thing, a weighted blanket. Oh, let's put that on a brand new newborn. Did you not just go through SIDS monitoring at the hospital? Let's take a baby that you haven't evaluated, put a weighted blanket on and wedges down the side. Hey, but it's seat on truck tank, guaranteed sleep. Yeah, guaranteed to make your child pass out. Yeah, no, I totally get that. But no, it's your baby will be on its own schedule and that's okay. They need to play with gravity. These are where the reflexes start coming in. It's not a primitive brain patterning. It's playing with gravity, right? And the reflex course, that's what I'm also introducing, is the gravity reflexes, right? And, it, and they're meant to do all that kind of stuff. And I get it that your child might startle or so forth. That's okay. They have to learn how to startle. Just like you have to, do you remember learning how to be mad at first? You know what I mean? Do, do you sit there right now? If I got you mad, are you going to sit there and go, no, you're not going to act like you did when you're, we have to go through processes. Now you have every right to be mad. If I hit your car, you can say, Michelle, we need to talk, right? But does that mean you hit my car back? You know what I mean? Like there's 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 ways of, of immature responses to mature responses, but we only realize that going through it. Now I'm very old. So I like to say too, like back in our day, we, we dresses, panty, those pantyhose itch, those little flower things. Oh my God, four years old. But the same four-year-old boy was playing tag football. They learned how to fight against their best friend. And afterward, hey, good game. Right? We didn't learn that kind of social fighting or that social interaction. And really it wasn't until the first boy around 16. And that's why I think we went through this stage of, oh, I know you think we talked about it, but I'm still, we, 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 didn't, we didn't finish this out. Because again, that, that immaturity of, of not knowing when to, I wouldn't say end the fight, but yeah, end the fight or go on to a more responsible way of doing it. Our social maturity take sometimes years and sometimes never achieves. But we, we are not fully matured when we're a day old. But you can't learn without movement. Again, the conversation is when will a child talk? You'll see stringing together sentences when they've completed their major milestones, your child's walking. And if your child has, has complications in the stages of development, now again, we have to go through where was the birthing process, where, where, where they are in their transitional skills and so forth, as far as gauging when talking is going to happen. We're meant to develop a certain way for a reason. As we have more money, the more restrictions we put on our baby. Swings, car seats, cars, uh, swaddling, all that costs money. At the, you know, back in the good old days, you just needed a blanket on the floor and your baby. That's all you had. You barely had a crib. Now, I get it. We are more sophisticated. But at the same times, too, we really, um, if your child needs swaddling, if you just say, Michelle, they just can't sleep any other way, then they don't have their absolute horizon. These are where the newborn movement assessment comes in. Or they, you're right, they didn't have a good first breath. Or you're right, they were in the NICU. I, I'm not saying this to be right. I'm saying this so you understand in different stages how to help your baby. But we can't let that, that hyper-responsiveness or more so that hypo, that lack of response. And that's a child really you don't want swaddling. Um, you know, and there's no good way of swaddling or bad way to swaddling. I must say, I don't like the mummy where the, the arms are down, that kind of thing. Of anything here, but again, in the womb, you shouldn't, again, the friction. In the womb, baby is here. You don't see friction. If there's friction, cord around the neck or whatever. Again, there's complications with your child. Um, we have to learn how to evaluate the babies. If you feel your baby does not know how to sleep or to be a baby, that's when you get involved instead of saying, well, I'm just going to, to, to swaddle. Um, uh, and we, we just have our third of our kids are in some form of either reading or, you know, dyslexia, speech to full on developmental to globally delayed. And we have to look at what we're doing. I'm not a fan of swaddling. It's not necessary. Um, you know, a blank and a baby shall do. But again, if your baby, yes, has reflux, yes, has those things, then, then they need help. Right, but but to to make them that they can't be non-responsive. Uh, I'd like how I said I'm stealing it from Yell. She said uh, we need development, not envelopment, of wrapping them up. And I said I'm going to steal that. But um, please, 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 don't listen to the person who says, "Oh, my big baby did that, and they turned out just fine." If they did not evaluate your child for the situation, 
then you need to say, what do I need to do in the evaluation process? Is my child not being able to do this, such as tummy time, lying down? Not because they hate it, because they can't do it for whatever reason. And that's what we have to start looking at. We're here to find out the nitpicks of, of what's going on with the individual child, why they're not going into milestones. That might be where you're thinking. Going into life skills, um, going into development, going into regression. That's what we're here to, to, to find out and how to help. But, but there's just way too much information out there of just, just do it, they'll be fine. Um, I'm not really willing to risk my child's life on it should be fine. Because that's what he was told about his cortical visual impairment. Yeah, he does have a visual problem, but he'll outgrow it. I never got told CBI. It wasn't until I got the letter from, from the ophthalmologist, the first ophthalmologist I went to. And, uh, you know, my son was legally blind and needed to be at the foundation for blind, not like, oops, he'll outgrow it. And then what if he doesn't? Who, who's on that ride? And my son had a massive infection. You didn't evaluate him for that. You know, so, so again, am I a rare case? Hopefully so. But unfortunately, more and more, I'm not seeing those rare cases. Um, they're becoming more common, um, as, as you can see. Think about your childhood. How many of these kids did you know? I have 8,000 members on this group. Did you know 8,000 people that had special needs? And that's a small piece of pie. Special needs kids right now are 240 million in the, in the world. So, so please, when you're doing something for your child, would you wanna have this done to you? Might be your first step. Um, uh, there's different ways of looking at it, but, but no, I don't believe in swaddling. I believe in if your child needs to be swaddled, why? What's going on? help that child then and there versus, you know, I hate to say it, instead of just shutting them up or letting them just pass out. Um, that's not the way to do it. And, and the, those little deviations there will become bigger deviations. And that's what I'm not willing to risk for your child, any child. Thanks.